Scan that news update, 15th of May 3308. Several dozen sightseers made the trek out to Praia Ake PX-X C3-1 to see the slow motion collision between moons AB3B and AB3C this weekend. The two ice worlds have an almost identical orbit and travel at an almost identical speed, such that they only collide once every two years at a relative velocity that could easily be outrun by a surface reconnaissance vehicle. Because of this glacial speed, and because of the vast interplanetary distances involved, the first few hours of observation consisted of wondering if the moon was getting any bigger in the sky. Once it became clear that it really was getting bigger, the view had become genuinely spectacular. Commanders were amused by finding they could fly from one planet to the other without ever leaving orbital crews, and then, as the moons got closer, without having to enter supercruise at all. As the moons came ever closer, many commanders chose to fly their ships through the ever-decreasing gap between the planets. With no direct light arriving in this narrow gap from the local star, commanders had to use night vision to avoid colliding with either moon. And then, a little later than forecast, the moons touched, causing a number of commanders' trapped ships to explode. Those using the local fleet carriers reported problems attempting to dock or undock as the carriers moved rapidly and unexpectedly through normal space. Some of those on foot in the fleet carrier observation decks were flung sideways so violently that they found themselves floating in space. The collision has passed the midway point, with the planets expected to separate completely early on Monday morning. Commanders on foot have been able to experience the moons erupting from each other at some considerable speed. It's surprising that two ice bodies passing through each other seem almost unchanged by the process, despite the rapid thaw and refreeze presumably caused by the immense stresses created by the gravitational load of these two moons. One experiment tried by a number of commanders consisted of jumping into geysers with the hope of being propelled to land on the surface of the other planet. While the planets were more than 50 kilometres apart, this was clearly not going to work. But when they were actually passing through each other, a geyser-assisted jump from one moon to the other proved very easy indeed. Except that the other moon turned out to be liquid and commanders found themselves disappearing through the surface and into the watery interior. Canon Research has published a calendar of events, including many planetary collisions. If you're looking for something apocalyptic to munch popcorn to, there are plenty more collisions coming up. Check out the Canon calendar for details. Reports have been flooding in that Professor Palin's new size 5A and 6A corrosion-resistant cargo racks, available only as a reward for helping the potty prof out by gathering metal alloys last week, have been infected with some kind of software virus, with the inventory management system unable to store goods of any kind, corrosive or not, in the 32-tonne and 64-tonne capacity variants. More worryingly, the virus seems to affect the ship's navigation systems too, causing them to fail with a black adder error message. The existing size 1 and size 4 versions of the corrosion-resistant cargo racks do not seem to be affected. The size 1 version of the module was made possible many years ago, after a similar appeal by Professor Palin, while the size 4 version is normally available only from technology brokers. The 1,119 owners of the defective cargo racks are keen that the defect should be resolved before Palin's next appeal for research materials, which he has hinted will benefit from a ship kitted out with these larger modules. <laughs> <laughs>